Welcome to the August edition of the Relapse Podcast. My name is Steve, and I hope you're staying cool in this summer heat. Later on, I have an interview with David Whitty, a drummer from Publicist UK, as well as so many other notable bands throughout Relapse's 25-year history. To kick things off, I have a block of brand new music. I'll be starting off with Windhand's new track, Two Urns. The new album, Grief's Inferno Flowers, comes out September 18th. They'll be touring the states throughout the fall with Monolord and Denava. Zombie's new album, Shapeshift, was recently announced to be released October 16th, and according to the band, it is darker, heavier, and more dynamic than most recent works. Speaking of Zombie, Steve Moore is also putting out his original soundtrack to the movie Cub. Cub is a brutal horror movie from Belgium about a young Cub Scout bullied by his troop mates who then go out on a camping adventure and are stalked by a deranged poacher who sets his target on the kids. There's a lot of excitement coming from the zombie guys, but up first, here's Pig Destroyer's Trojan Horde. You may be thinking to yourself, why is Pig Destroyer in a section with new music? Didn't Prower in the Yard come out in the early 2000s? As a matter of fact, Scott Hall is actually going to be remixing the album. It's coming out in mid-September, so early fall, so stay tuned for that. Right now, here's the remixed version of Trojan Horrors. Make sure to go to relapse.com for all pre-orders and more.
Along with the beauty of releasing albums comes the fun of going on tour. These next few bands you'll be hearing all released or will be releasing new albums this year and hitting the road for support. A little bit ago, I played New Wind Hand, but you know what? I'll play another New Wind Hand track. This is Crypt Keys. I'll be playing Ecstatic Vision as well, who will be touring the fall with Uncle Acid and Ruby the Hatchet. During last month's podcast, I talked about Toxic Holocaust going on tour this fall. Well, just recently announced was Toxic Holocaust's tour with Lord Dying. In a little bit, I'll be playing Lord Dying's new track, Poison Alters, title track off their 2015 release. Right now, here is Christian Mistress. They're going on a headlining tour in September with High Spirits. Here's their new track, Open Road. Check out Relapse.com for all those tour dates. And stay tuned a little later for my interview with David Witte and his takeover.
Earlier in the year, Gruesome announced they'll be playing the 2016 Maryland Death Fest, as well as a few select festivals throughout the fall, such as Obscene Extreme America and Full Terror Assault. You seriously do not want to miss this chance. You may never get it again. Coming up right now is my interview with David Witte, and then afterwards we'll be playing some of his favorite relapse tracks, a few Publicist UK, and even taking a flashback through his long history with relapse, diving even further into the 25-year celebration of the label. So sit back and enjoy. This is Steve from the Relapse Podcast. I'm here today with David Witte, drummer from so many bands, but most recently Publicist UK. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. I just Enjoying to, a wonderful day, drinking some coffee. That's no better way to start the day. I just want to thank you for taking the time to be on the podcast with me today. Yeah, of course. I'm stoked. I'm a, a fellow New Jersey guy. Really? Where in New Jersey are you from? I was born in Red Bank, grew up on the coast, uh, has lived, and then I lived in Seabright and Avon for a while before I moved down south. I'm right from Matawan. Oh, yeah. That's real close to me. It's a very close. Oh, pretty much the next town's over. You like bagels, man. <laughs> born and raised. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are great. Your new project, Publicist UK, is putting out their debut album, Forgive Yourself, next month, August 21st. You want to give a little bit of insight into how that project came to life? Well, uh, it's it's a pretty exciting, challenging, and completely different project for me, as it sounds nothing like uh, anything else I've done before. And, and it's cool to be a part of something like that, to learn some new things. But uh, how it came about is uh, my buddy Brett, who lives in New Jersey, uh, we play in a band together called The Glorious Gone, which is the post burnt by the Sun band. And he was down here listening to some demos that uh, Dave Opachowski, the main writer from uh, Publicist UK, had been working on, and he played it for me, and I was like, oh, wow, these are cool, man. Uh, If you ever need a drummer, I'd I'd be interested. And, like, probably, like, 15 minutes later, I was in the band. (laughs) It was was quick, and it was, like, spontaneous. And, yeah, I, I really heard... I really liked what I heard, and I liked Jack's voice. That's what really stuck out to me the most. Even though Dave's a really great songwriter, Zach's voice kind of lured me in. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how that went down, and uh, it's pretty exciting. I'm excited to see what happens. For someone who may not be familiar with the project, how would you describe the sound of it? Uh, It's definitely more rock-based compared to anything else I've done, and uh, people are quick to uh, say it's like a heavy Joy Division uh, my mother said it, it sounds like David Bowie. <laughs> so it's, it's got a bunch of different references and, and that type of uh, like dark wave type sound, I guess, if you want to call it. How would you say you bought your extreme background of drumming style to this, though? Uh, it's not really extreme besides hitting hard. You know, being a musician and loving music, uh, I've always been in multiple bands my whole life. And because I have, uh, you know, there's a lot in me that that won't necessarily work in a certain band. So, I, I, you know, I love playing drums and music so much that I feel like I need a bunch of different outlets. And just this is just another one where I get to concentrate on playing with space and uh, just playing regular beats, which was kind of a challenge for me because it's the first time I ever recorded with a click track on my own, and uh, that was kind of stressful. So <laughs> I'm not really used to that. So it was a really good learning experience once. So you say it's definitely a way to uh, enhance your eclectic styles? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you could do the same thing over and over again, but it gets boring after a while, you know? Especially when you've been playing in so many bands for a while now. Yeah, it's cool. It's, you know, I'm lucky and fortunate to have an opportunity to play uh, with, with a bunch of great musicians from all backgrounds and all kinds of music, so I feel fortunate about it. Will you be touring with the band as well? Yeah, we'll do some touring, uh, you know... Most of us are in multiple bands, so the juggling, the juggling and act will have to start up, you know. We will go out and support the record, for sure. Do you have any shows lined up in the near future? Yeah, we're doing our initial run. Uh, it kicks off August 20th through August 27th. It's a quick eight-show run and goes out to Ohio and back. Half of it is with... Uh, the first four shows are with Young Widows, and the second four shows are with uh, Dalek which I'm really excited about because I'm a huge fan, huge fan of both bands. And how would you try and get fans of yours that may be into the more extreme bands to come out and want to see Publicist UK? 
Uh, post the, post the uh, show day and go, hey, come on out. <laughs> <laughs> Easy enough. Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, you know, if, it's kind of hard because it, it doesn't really sound like anything else. I guess you have to have an open mind to, you know, to check it out. We're going to play a couple tracks off the new Publicist UK album in a little bit, but I want to get into, this is the 25th year anniversary for Elapse, and as you were saying a little bit before ago, you have a very long history with the label. You've been in a yeah. lot of you've been in a lot of bands for relapse. Yeah, I remember Matt and I remember meeting Matt and Bill when you know the record label was in their in their uh, when they lived at home with their parents and I was in the basement a long time ago. <laughs> the first band you were in was Human Remains, which was based out of Hazlitt. Mm-hmm. And That's now, right. so coming from Human Remains to Publicist UK, how has you yourself grown, and how have you seen the label grown? I always loved Relapse for the diversity, and they were music fans and, and very open-minded. They were into forward-thinking music and, you know, creativity. They just didn't paint themselves into a corner with one genre, and I think that's what has made Relapse strive and be relevant today and, you know, kind of pave the way for bands that want to do their own thing. Yeah, and I've grown from it, too, you know. You know, just applying myself in different situations as the years go by. I'm... The more music, you know, the more music you like, the more open-minded you are to different styles, the more, uh, you know, influences you have to draw from. And when you look back and relapse is 25 years, there's, you have everything from, you have the Dillinger Escape Plan, Suffocation, and then Mersbow, so it's really all over the place. Yeah, and then uh, there's one of my favorite records is from the release, the sub-label of Relapse, and it's called Rapoon. It's like a, like a soundscape type record, really beautiful sound. For people who may not be as familiar with your work, what are the other bands that you did with Relapse? Uh, well, it started with Human Remains, and then we moved on to uh, Brought by the Sun on that record. Uh, and then, uh, sorry about that, I got my words jumped up there. And uh, Brought by the Sun. And then I did this project called East West Blast Test with my friend Chris over in the West Coast where I recorded all the drums over here and then just sent them to him and he put whatever he wanted on it and then it kind of worked out. So Relapse put that out. And then I did a track for my friends in Circle of Animals. There's more industrial type stuff. And then uh, Birds of Prey is another band that I participated with with uh, Eric Larson at the Alabama Thunder Pussy who was on Relapse for a long time as well. And then... Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I, I might be missing something. I've done so much stuff over the years, I'm starting to forget stuff. It definitely all seems like it blends together after a while. For all the bands that you were in with Relapse, what was either, not necessarily maybe your favorite, but your most fun you had at drumming? Well, Human Remains was my first band. So, uh, you know, I learned a lot that way. And, uh, you know, we learned to be comfortable with ourselves and, and do whatever we wanted and didn't really care <laughs> if anybody liked it or not, which was kind of interesting. We we had no idea what we were doing, but we just did it and we were happy. But I think from a creative point of view, uh, Burnt by the Sun was, was a huge thing for me. And, uh, you know, we actually went out and Human Remains didn't play that much. We played a bunch of shows, but we never toured. What was it, just so, mostly around the Hazlitt area? No, uh, we... Uh, we went out of town. Our first show was in first out of town show was in Rochester in 1990, where we drove all the way up there and got paid 20 bucks. Nice. <laughs> but we met some really good lifelong friends from that trip, though. So every every little bit's important. But I guess the funnest I had was Mark by the Sun because we actually spent time on the road together and, and we did multiple records and all that. Would you say that was really your first big touring band? Uh, yeah, I guess so. It's the first band I actually, well, the first band I actually did tours with was the Gordon's Axis, which is a non-relapse band. So I guess the first relapse band would be definitely, uh, Run by the Sun, the first time, you know, for touring. And for people that may not know as well, you were also in Municipal Waste, so you, mm -hmm. de you have a huge discography under your belt. Yeah, I've done a lot of cool stuff, and, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to have been able to record it and, and listen back to it years later. And it's cool that, like, all this different stuff that I've done, there's so many different musicians involved that push me in different ways, so I get, they get a lot out of me, and it's really cool. It's a lot of good ways to learn influences off of people. Yeah, no doubt. Being in music now for 
25 years, seeing where things have been going with the extreme styles of metal, where do you think the future holds for the genre? I don't know. It keeps getting more extreme, more extreme, and flexing of ability and talent, and that's cool. I, I wish it would, I wish it'd come back to more of a song base thing for me personally, because I love, I love ability and I love technicality. But I don't know. It's I think something's missing. Do you think it's an emotional kind of thing? Pardon me. Do you think it's a, an emotional lack in the songs? Yeah, I think that's some of that's missing but you know at the same time when when i was in my early 20s and my late teens i wanted to be the fastest guy in the world too so i i'm guilty of it i get it but i don't know maybe because i'm getting older i want to hear more of a song hmm. <laughs> it sounds lame but i don't know I, i'd like to see uh things shift back to more of a band format than less uh i don't know put together or computer or you know what i mean but Believe me, I like electronic music a lot. I'm not trying to put it down, but I just I'd like to see more of uh, back to the song format. I guess many bands I'll be reading interviews from them, and a lot of them will say it's a lot of bands trying to be as perfect as possible. Do you think that's necessarily a negative? Uh, it all depends on what you want out of it. You know, uh, you can tell that when stuff's overdone and overprocessed and all that stuff. And, I mean, every record I've done, there's always there's always mistakes on it that I leave on it. Little things here and there that I know I could have did better, but it's not going to kill me at the end of the day. It gives and that actually, human error. That's why we chose uh, Brought by the Sun. We chose the second album title, The Perfect is the Enemy of the Good. And, and I got that from watch, watching the, uh, a Neil Peart drum documentary where he, he goes in at length talking about uh, mach, you know becoming machine-like or as opposed to more human. Hmm. It's very and interesting. I like the more human aspect of it. You want to have that little bit of error to show that you're not trying yeah, to make there's some life to it. You know, I mean, it's cool to have everything done and all the T's crossed and the I's dotted and perfect the way you want it. But I, I like the the dynamic of it, the ebb and flow of you know, like rushing or slowing down or hitting harder. I I think you know adds a, a great dynamic to the music, more emotion. It's a great way to put it, Dave. And right now we're going to get into that long history you have with Relapse. I'm going to play a bunch of tracks that you got to pick out for the podcast today. So, cool. And there's some really some cool stuff. that uh, The stuff that I picked from the bands I've done is some of the songs that I like, not necessarily the, the hits, so to speak. That's but, exactly what I want to I want to hear what you want to hear. Yeah, so uh, the Burnt by the Sun song, it's probably my favorite drumming track on that record. It's pretty creative and... Yeah, so I'll stop babbling about it, and <laughs> hopefully people will like it. Now we're going to get into your most recent project, Publicist UK. The two tracks you picked out were Levitate the Pentagon and Canary, and what do you want to say about these songs? I really like them. You know, it, it's refreshing and cool for me to play drums instead of going nuts the whole time. And believe me, I like going nuts. It's fun playing involved drumming, but this is cool to like lay back and play for this song. It's a whole other test of will for me. And I think the songs are really great. Dave's a really great songwriter. So uh, it was a lot of fun to do.
self help book at the STD clinic. That ship has sailed. The ship has sailed. All of the ships have sailed. You always had a Kryptonian grasp of truth and beauty. You were born to die in a better world than this one. Your tombstone will read. I tried, I failed, only God and everyone else can and should judge me. Let me take the penalty.
Now going back through Relapse's 25-year anniversary with Dave, we're going to start off with Burnt by the Sun, his second band on the label. All three albums were put out through Relapse. This particular track is Rev 101. Yeah, that track is uh, probably my favorite drumming track on that record. And that record was pretty interesting for us because it was the first record we did with just one guitar. Uh, and uh, we wrote and recorded that whole record in three and a half weeks because uh, I remember when Gordon was at Relapse, he was he suggested that we you know put the pedal to the metal because uh, we didn't want to get lost in the shuffle because uh, if we had taken our time, this would have re- this record would have came out at the same time with a bunch of other records, and uh, no one really would have paid as much attention. So we cranked it out to to be able to get our own time on it. It sounds weird, but it actually worked. It's our most experimental record, and I, I like it a lot. And then next would be uh, Human Remains. Yeah, my first band. It's the band where, you know, we pushed ourselves harder than anything. And uh, that song there is one of the songs when we when we uh, started to actually break the mold and become our own thing. Because when we started out, we were just nothing besides a, a Ripping Corpse worship band because we loved them so much. We wanted to be just like them. 
and then, you know, we realized that, hey, you know, we can do anything we want, so we started experimenting a lot, and that's one of the first songs that came out of it. I think that we wrote that one in 92. It would be a East West Blast Test. Yeah, uh, that's the project I did with my friend Chris, where I recorded all the drums here and then mailed them to him, and then he just put whatever he wanted on top of it, and you know, it, it worked out. It was pretty cool. And we had our friend Gary from News Crush sing on it because I was always a huge fan of his voice. <laughs> Yeah. 
Next is Circle of Animals. Uh, that's another project that I did with Bruce Sanford Parker, who's recorded a bunch of bands in Chicago and, and Corrections House in Minsk years ago. Uh, yeah, I just went out there and did that one track, and, and they used it. Uh, the record... Circle of Animals has a different drummer for each track, and it's got some really great drummers on it. Next is Birds of Prey. That's a project I did with Eric Larson, longtime uh, relapse resident with Alabama Thunder Pussy. Eric lives here in, in Richmond, and uh, he asked me to do that. So that's how that came about. That's a more rock-based thing for me. That uh, yeah, that's just coming. In, that's not coming out too right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's, it's I guess it's uh, the first more rock-based thing I I did at that time. You know, Eric's background, Alabama Thunder Post, he was more rock, so it just made more sense. He wanted to make it kind of like uh, like a nod to Entombed.
Now we're going to dive into some of Dave's hand-picked favorite relapse bands. Starting off, here's a Gore Fork Nosebleeds House of Feasting. Yeah, when that record came out, actually, Scott hit me up. And, uh, you know, I met him while I was doing Black Iron Jacket. And uh, I actually got an electronic drum kit to play live with a and years ago. We did one practice, and it was fun. But it never really worked out. But that was always my favorite song. And it was, like, super slow and crushingly heavy. And I think Scott's work with super slow stuff, really heavy stuff, is just as good as the fast stuff he does. And that song always stuck out to me. Next, we have Unholy Massacre by Incantation. Yeah, uh, being from New Jersey, I always loved Incantation. And uh, whenever that record came out, it was super heavy. And uh, it's still great to this day when I go back and listen to it. Just a trick, 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 just a trick
Yeah, up next is My Relationship by Dysrhythmia. I love that band. They're so great. It's probably my favorite relapse band of all time. Uh, I was at their first show ever when they didn't have a name and they only had four and a half songs. It's that like 13 in Philly. And it was so amazing to watch them grow as musicians and songwriters over the years. And I think every record got better and better. But that's one of my favorite songs for sure. Awesome. And then we have a uh, Solidarity by Disrupt. Yeah, one of the early cross punk bands that I think were so killer. They had so much energy, and uh, they could actually play their instruments quite well too. They they were the perfect band for that type of style. I thought they were really angry, and it came across in their music. Last but not least, we'll be playing Neurosis's track, The Doorway. For the first time in over 10 years, you can catch the reissued vinyls of Through Silver and Blood, Times of Grace, and Grace, the Times of Grace companion piece by Tribes of Neurot. All three records will be pressed on 180-gram vinyl and housed in heavy-duty tip-on jackets. That comes out September 4th on Deluxe 2X LP. Yeah, I sold to Zero was my first experience with them, and, and I liked everything that came out. I, I, I love how that band evolved and did whatever they want. And, you know, uh, when when that came out, I was 
so blown away on how heavy it was. And seeing it live on on this cycle they did for that record is quite an experience that I'll never forget. So yeah, that's that song's amazing.
finally, Dave, looking online, I see that you're a very big fan of Belgian beers. Oh, yeah. I love beers. What Not is your uh, your favorite Belgian brewery? Uh, it's Adola, small micro uh, Belgian first microbrewery in 1980. And the beer that changed my life was still not. It's a winter beer. Mm. That's a great beer. Yeah, Belgian beers are, were my gateway into beer. I love beer quite a bit. And uh, you guys got some really good breweries up there now. Carton and Kane. I'm a big fan so, of the two. Yeah, Mon- uh, from Monmouth and Ocean County. Yeah, they're the best. There's there's people that have been making beer there for years, but these guys kind of like took it away and are running down the street with it, doing it better than anybody else, I think. Uh, thanks for the years of support and being, uh, you know, w- being willing to listen without everybody wanting to listen, you know, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing and uh, I'm super fortunate for it. It's, it's amazing to be able to have, uh, play an instrument and, and, you know, play what you want and people care about it and come back. So it's great. I'm, I'm a lucky dude. That was David Witte, the new drummer of Publicist UK. Their new album, Forgive Yourself, is out August 21st, so make sure to check it out. And if you've been following Relapse for a while, then you know all his great bands. That'll wrap up the August edition of the Relapse podcast. As always, it's been a blast, so make sure to tune in next month as we'll go over more new bands, dive deeper into Relapse's 25-year anniversary. Check out Relapse.com for all those exclusive pre-orders, tour dates, and so much more. I'm Steve, and goodbye.